from offering a delicious protein source with zero cruelty to giving vegans a chance to bring some meat back into their diets, here's why genetically modified meat could be the way of the future. Starting off with how it could give people the chance to enjoy a nice burger without the guilt. Let's face it, the meat industry can be downright cruel. For one thing, most meat comes from factory farming, which is usually the furthest thing from humane. Animals are packed into cramped quarters, pumped full of artificial feed, and they're not even allowed to move, because that helps the meat get more tender. Even if you try to get organic, free-range meat, that doesn't change the fact that an animal had to lose its life in the process. Lab-grown meat, often referred to as cultured meat to make it sound more palatable, involves absolutely no violence against animals. What's more, cultured meat makes it easier to avoid malnutrition. Look, it can be hard to follow a diet without any meat in it, at least if you want to stay healthy. Sure, there are plenty of plant-based proteins out there, but even so, getting your daily nutritional intake can be a real challenge. After all, you need to eat like half a pound of cooked chickpeas to get the same protein as a quarter pound of beef, and it can get pretty tiring after a while. Even if you want to avoid meat for the sake of innocent animals, you need to put a ton of effort into figuring out your diet, and most lifelong carnivores just don't have what it takes to do that. Meat's just the best source of protein you can find, because just a small amount can give you all the nutrients you'll need for the day. The great thing about cultured meat is that it's a legit viable alternative, offering roughly the same nutritional value as the real thing, with none of the hassle that comes with meat-free diets. In fact, you could even say that cultured meat is healthier, because it doesn't have any of the nasty stuff that's in conventional meat. If you think that steak you bought at Walmart is good for you, think again. The hormones alone are enough to gross you out, and they're necessary for a conventional meat, because animals just don't grow fast enough to meet demand. To be fair, these hormones aren't terrible for you, but wouldn't you rather eat something that's hormone-free? Because you see, factory farming is a pretty unsanitary practice. And if they don't pump animals full of medicine, the close proximity of livestock would make diseases spread in no time. Livestock farming uses up 80% of the world's antibiotic supply. Not only is this wasting medicine that could save human lives, but it's also creating superbugs that even the strongest of antibiotics can't kill. Okay, so far we've talked about the health benefits of cultured meat, but how does this stuff even get made? I mean, can you really trust meat that's grown in a lab? Let's take a look and see for ourselves. Cultured meat isn't as scary as it sounds because it's basically just conventional meat, except that the animal doesn't need to be slaughtered. Instead, scientists just harvest a few cells from the animal and they put them into these things called bioreactors. They are also called cultivators, and you can think of them as vessels for the meat to grow in. Sounds gross at first, but hear me out. Scientists basically just replicate the natural process of cell growth. They feed the tissue sample with all the essential nutrients like glucose and amino acids, and before you know it, a big old slab of beef grows right in front of your eyes. Okay, technically it takes up to a couple months to finish growing, but you get the idea. If this gets done on an industrial scale, you can kiss food insecurity goodbye, because there'll be so much meat that you won't even know what to do with it. I've only scratched the surface of cultured meat's benefits, by the way. You see, it's not just unsanitary and cruel livestock practices that you need to be worried about. Real meat also has a terrible impact on the environment, mostly because of how much water it uses up. Like, you need over 15,000 liters of water just to get a kilo of beef. But with cultured meat, you can reduce water consumption by as much as 90%. With the vast majority of the world's water supply going towards agriculture, we need to do whatever we can to bring that number down, because water shortages are going to be major problems in the future. That alone makes cultured meat seem like the best thing since sliced bread. But we should also talk about the land that it could free up. The meat industry uses about 70% of the world's fertile land, and that's just to grow the food for livestock. If we make the switch to cultured meat, we could free up massive tracts of real estate that could be put to good use. With overpopulation and urban sprawl pushing civilization to the brink of collapse, humanity could really do with all that extra space. It could go towards growing more vegetables and fruit, creating more housing, or here's a thought, why don't we just leave nature alone for a change? 
cultured meat makes it possible, because it needs about 1% of the land that conventional meat does. This one two combos nothing to sneeze at, but there's a lot more where that came from. Cultured meat could also bring down carbon emissions. Seriously, livestock rearing accounts for about 18% of greenhouse gas emissions. Eating meat is just as bad as using fossil fuels, but no one really talks about it much. Apart from carbon dioxide, cattle rearing in particular releases a ton of methane into the atmosphere, which is dangerous on a whole other level. Methane can trap up to 30 times more heat than carbon dioxide, so if we stopped raising cattle and started using cultured meat, humanity could take a massive leap forward in the fight against climate change. So, cultured meat definitely has a lot of positives, but are there any downsides? Unfortunately, a lot of livestock farmers might go out of business. Call it a necessary evil, but these farmers are real people, and they could very well lose their livelihood once cultured meat hits store shelves. After all, the low land use and water consumption, coupled with the enormous efficiency of the cultivation process, means that cultured meat might be way cheaper than conventional meat. That said, it's not all bad. Surveys have shown that people have mixed feelings about cultured meat. There will always be a market for the real thing, and the rise of cultured meat could make organic, grass-fed, free-range meat a luxury, giving farmers the chance to raise their prices to make up for the shortfall. What's more, the people cultivating this meat will still need raw materials, and they'll have to buy it off of farmers. The quality of the meat depends on the quality of the animal. You can't make a prime steak from a starving cow cells, so farmers still have an incentive to raise healthy animals. There will be a human cost, of course. We just don't know what the long-term economic impact might look like, but it's safe to say cultured meat will probably do more harm than good. With the enormous boost it can give to our food supply to the drastically reduced environmental impact, not to mention the health benefits, it really seems like cultured meat is the answer to a lot of our problems. That said, there's one last group of people that we need to discuss. How do vegans and vegetarians feel about all of this? It can be easy to make fun of the vegan crowd, but they kind of have a point. Although saying meat is murder might be taking it too far. Technically speaking, cultured meat is exactly the same as conventional meat on a molecular level. So if you avoid meat for religious reasons, you're probably going to want to steer clear. But what about the people that don't like meat because they can't bear to think of animals being hurt? Well, it's complicated. The biopsy process isn't exactly pain-free, even though it's nowhere close to being as bad as the stuff that goes on in the meat industry. Animals will still be confined to an extent, and there will always be hardliners who'll say that cultured meat goes against the spirit of veganism because their whole philosophy revolves around the idea that animals are equal to human beings. Maybe the idealists out there will find cultured meat tough to swallow, but the more pragmatic vegans agree that it's a step in the right direction. It's hard to deny the overall improvement in their living conditions. Not a single animal will ever have to die again, and that's certainly something vegans can get behind. So from its potential to satisfy the needs of vegans, to the cruelty-free protein it'd let the rest of us enjoy. This was all you need to know about why genetically modified meat is the way of the future.